Well, hello, we are in chapter five of Developing the Leader Within You by my favorite author, John Maxwell. And in chapter five, the subject is problem solving. Problem solving, the quickest way to gain leadership is problem solving. And one of my mentors always said that the size of your paycheck is directly in proportion to the size of the problems that you can solve. I like to paraphrase that and say the size of your paycheck is in direct proportion to the problem size of the problems that you can withstand, that you can withstand. Humans are like tea bags. I read this on a tea bag once. Humans are like tea bags. You don't really know what's inside until you stick them in hot water. So let's talk about problem solving and leadership today. In John Maxwell's book, he says that in a well-led organization, problems are solved at the lowest level. What does that mean? That means that when you can teach and empower your people, even the newest associates, how to solve problems, they will be a happy associate and you will be a happy leader. But the organization in general will be a more productive and powerful organization. Let's take a look at Nordstrom's. Have you ever been to Nordstrom's? What I love about what they do, or at least at one time, they empowered their employees to do whatever it takes to make the customer happy. I, at some point they had a budget. Every person that worked there had like a budget that you can actually use to spend just in case you had to buy an employee a cup of coffee or something like that or buy a screaming baby a cookie to keep them occupied while mom went shopping. And so they taught their um, associates at the lowest level, at the, you know, on the ground floor, out in the trenches, how to be a problem solver and to put leadership in their own hands at that level. So problem solving, is the quickest way to gain leadership in any organization. If you want your boss to love you, solve the problems. If you want your boss to love you, your leader to love you, be the person that brings the solutions. Now, problems introduce us to ourselves. As we were just talking and having the discussion of, are you an imploder or are you an exploder when it comes to being faced with problems? And what I love about problem solving and who loves problems, nobody loves problems, okay? But I feel like over time, as I've been, I've seen it all, trust me. In this business, I've seen it all, I've experienced it all. I've met all sorts of people. I've met people that bring problems. I've met people, that, I mean, I've dealt with a lot of different things. But the one thing that I can appreciate that problems have brought is that they've made me a stronger person. Like a diamond only comes out like when you buy it at the store, after it's been through tons and tons of pressure and heat, does that diamond form into this gorgeous shining object like it is today. Someone said, if you can smile whenever anything goes wrong, you are either a nitwit or you're a repairman. But John Maxwell says, I'd like to say that you're a leader in the making. When you can learn to welcome problems with a smile, <laughs> you know that you've gone through personal development and growth and you can feel proud about yourself that you have become resilient. Maybe you're under a lot of problems right now and you're feeling stress and you're not appreciating that I'm being a funny when it comes to talking about problems. But I once heard a young child and I was so impressed when the child said this at a church service. He said, you must go through a test in order to have a testimony. And I am proud of every single one of you here today because we've been through a four letter word in the last four years. Would you agree through the pandemic? Some, lot, some people went through a lot of four-letter words, and we survived. You're standing. You're here. You are here today. 
Maybe you've been through a lot of four letter words in previous relationships and or battling with health challenges or doing lots of, you know, going through four letter words. And I keep saying that because I'm not going to say that. <laughs> but you know what? You are here and you made it. I'm proud of you. If you could go through that, you could go through anything. So world, here we come. Now, how do you become a better leader when it comes to problem solving? First, predict the problems in advance. Be a leader that's willing to chart the course. For example, we're in the last quarter of 2022. And the other day I was like, hmm, let's see, it's the beginning of November. And some people might make the excuse of not wanting to do a business or to do their business because of the holidays. Hmm, how can we change it so that way people will want to do the business because of the holidays? So we came out with a flyer, went on to Canva and made this cool flyer that basically said, a side hustle for the holidays get paid daily, work from home, start today, and put the flyer out on my Facebook page. And I've gotten already seven people that have said, hey, I'm interested, I'm interested. So when some people would say, take the holidays and use it as an excuse to not look at a business opportunity or to not look at doing the business or get involved, you got to think of the people that want to make extra money because of the holidays. Because the holidays are coming, they need to make extra money. And we can be that blessing in their lives, helping them get active in their business, helping them start a new business. So great leaders can see and predict problems, but chart the solution in advance before they happen. Also, John Maxwell says we need to have a willingness to be flexible. We need to be flexible. When I was working at the church, Saddleback Church had this met, mo, uh, motto, that's the word I'm looking for, called fast, fluid, and flexible. Saddleback Church led by Rick Warren, who's one of the largest churches in North America today, said in order to grow fast and grow big, you need to be willing to be fast, fluid, and flexible. There were some things where I had the church service planned exactly how I wanted it to go, exactly how it needed to be. And then when things didn't go right, I had to be willing to be flexible. When we couldn't get that certain type of donut because it was like a specific donut theme for the service that the pastor was going to use and I had to make sure I had that. And But then those donuts weren't ready on time. We had to move, okay? I couldn't just sit there and stew and complain about the fact that those particular donuts weren't ready. We had to move and we had to be flexible. So leaders, great leaders have to be willing to bring their flexibility and to bring the solutions, be solution oriented instead of being problem oriented. Talk about the solutions more than talking about the problems. And problems handled well often make us better. Jim Rohn says, when I was a new leader, I used to think, I wish life were easier. I wish that I didn't have as many problems. But over time, as I continually faced problems because they weren't going away, I started to experience a shift in my mindset and began to think to myself, I wish I were better. So Jim Rohn says, don't wish it were easier. Wish you were better. Don't wish for less problems. Wish for more skills. And in the Bible, some of the greatest books in the Bible were written during times of problems. Psalms was written in the face of adversity. And the New Testament, a lot of the letters from the New Testament were written from jail. When leaders of good character face problems, they rise to the occasion and are often defined by their response. So in John Maxwell's book, Developing the Leader Within You, we're on chapter five, Problem Solving. He says, there are several types of people. In fact, in business, there are two types of people that are in your organization. One that carries a bucket full of gasoline and one that carries a bucket of water. And we always have a choice. 
Do we want to pour gasoline on the problem and make it worse and make it bigger than it is and talk about that problem and stew about the problem and talk to other people about the problem to make them now think that there's a problem even though they didn't think, the other person didn't think there was a problem until you brought it up? Or, or are you carrying around a bucket of water where as soon as someone starts gossiping or complaining, you're squelching that problem? But of course we want to solve it. Some problems are real problems, so we don't want to just like uh, glaze over the fact that someone is having a real problem. We want to help them. Jim Rohn says, don't tell them that they're in a mess. Don't tell them that you've spilt the milk and leave them in the mess. Help them out of the mess. He also says that people who become, there are people who become problem magnets. There are some people that just love problems. If Dale has a problem with Bob, and Dale has a problem with Elisa, and Dale has a problem with Jesse. Dale's the problem. You know, those, those people that go around always having problems with other people? Well, maybe they need to take a look inside at the man in the mirror. Now, relationships, leaders who go through lots of problems and have had gone through relationship issues or have gone through challenges in their business and have seen a lot. Leaders who've had battle scars develop rhino skin. And you're thinking, I don't want battle scars. <laughs> I don't want the scars in order to get the rhino skin, but that's what it takes, right? So welcome them, welcome the problems and say, okay, this is gonna be, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. Hey, we're going to find the solutions. Brian Carruthers says, when you step up to the counter of success, expect to pay full retail. And he's right. Now, when you're faced with a problem, I had a great coach and mentor. His name was David Bird. He said, anytime you've got something that really upsets you, I give you permission. It's called the 30-second rule. He says, I give you permission to set your alarm for 30 seconds Stew about it, complain about it, cry about it, throw things at the wall if you need to. But then when that alarm goes off after 30 seconds, you better get up and you better get going. You better get up and get moving. He says, get up and start making a can-do list. Make a list of things that you can do about the issue and start knocking it out. In our organization, we have a saying that positive goes down and negative goes up. Positive news goes down, negative news goes up. You never want to, what they say, four letter word on your team, <laughs> right? You never want to bring negativity and problems to the team. How, but where do you, but you need to solve the problem. So where do you go for troubleshooting? Well, you go up, but here's where, how I also want to edit that. You don't always want to be bringing negative up. You don't always want to be weighing your leader with negativity. So how do you bring the problem to your leader? The troubleshooting, you always bring a solution with you when you're coming to the leader with the problem. And half the times I've solved my problem before I could bring it to my leader. I've, I've actually now, I barely bring any problems to my leader. <laughs> it's only solutions and, and it's all solutions. So in the middle of difficulty, Lies opportunity, says Albert Einstein. This is how every great business started. Out of problems came solutions. Out of solutions came great business ideas like prepaid legal services, Inc. When Harlan Stonecipher was in a car accident and the lady who hit him decided to sue him, that was a problem. He had health insurance to cover his two weeks in the hospital. He had car insurance to cover his banged up car. But what he didn't have was what he needed. He needed legal insurance. So out of that problem, life devastating issue that he had and had to overcome came the greatest solution of all time, legal shield. Now 52 years strong, yes. So, Sometimes problems are blessings in disguise. Sometimes God is delaying us the, 
rosy, easy path. And we don't know why until later when the blessing comes. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. That's that's why, God. Thank you for not letting me marry that other guy who would have been a complete and total, just um, uh, you know, just it would have been completely a mess. Thank God, thank God for not answering every prayer, Lord. So when it comes to problem solving. How are you going to handle things moving forward? But more importantly, how are you going to teach your team? In our company, when we're teaching our newest associates especially, we want to teach them the habit of calling the home office when they have an issue. If, I, if you have everyone calling you, if you are solving all of your new associates' problems for them, you're empowering them to do nothing. But I empower someone when I give them the phone number to the home office and say, call the home office, ask them how to set up your website instead of me doing it for you. Call the home office, ask them how to do this, you know, put into the hands, show them where to find the member concern form. Do you know where to find the member concern form? You have to do a little digging in order to get there on ellisengage.com, okay? But if, if you go to Ellis Engage and then you log in, there is actually a contact us under your business links and under contact us is the member concern form. You wanna make sure you're always filling that out, okay? Because when problems come, welcome the problems. In fact, Don, Don Brinkley recently brought on a new business partner calling her pre-cancel report. Who really wants to call the pre-cancel report? I mean, I don't know anyone that's like, yay, excited about it. We all have to do it. I called my pre-cancel report today and I, I, was, I was relieved that when I did reach people, they're like, oh, I didn't know I was in there. My credit card, that's right. I had to change my credit card. Oh, thanks for the reminder. So, so don't be afraid to face the problem. Don't be afraid to make those phone calls. So Don Brinkley was calling her pre-cancel report and she said, hey, Kyle, is everything okay? You know, I, I noticed that you're in pre-cancel. Is everything all right? He goes, yes. He goes, but I lost my business, so I don't need the business plan anymore. His business closed during the pandemic. In fact, the business closed long ago, but he loved Legal Shield so much, he kept the membership anyway because he just loved it, even though he didn't have a business anymore. He still has the family plan. And so she goes, well, what are you doing for money? And he goes, well, I'm doing these other things, you know? And she goes, well, are you interested in making extra money? She was, he, and he became a business partner and is now signing up customers for Legal Shield and making money. So she was able to take a problem that we don't want to face, that we don't have the energy to do, that we don't feel like dealing with. But when you lean into it, guess what? You become that person's best friend. I had someone that had a crappy experience and you know, nothing's perfect. Don said it perfectly the other night at the Corona business briefing. She goes, we're not perfect, but I'll wait. What else do you have where you can call a lawyer for $29 a month? <laughs> what else do you have, right? What's your other choice? I'll wait. And she waited and everybody left because there's no other choice, right? So long story short, I had someone that was, that was upset, something happened. The attorney had, was having a bad day and uh, didn't put their best foot forward on that day. And so, uh, but I said, I told my member, I said, thank you so much for letting me know because I want to make sure that you're getting the best quality services possible. Would you, you know, could you please um, allow me to assist you in, in making this right? Please give me the opportunity to make this right. So I was able to go to the member concern form, which I have saved in my phone now, actually, as a quick link and saved as a contact. So anytime I, I need to fill it out, I fill it out. And immediately, I love it because our customer service department is on it. Legal Shield contacts the law firm and the managing partners and makes sure that our member is getting the service they need and contacts the member as well. So immediately, that my member felt totally taken care of and they were working out the issue. And as a result of being attended to, you know, people want to give us a second chance. They want to give you 
the, you know, the people are understanding as long as we're being, they're getting what they're need and they're, we're, they're being attended to, they feel um, like you're doing an amazing job. So lean into the problems. Okay. Don't let them scare you. So let's go into breakout rooms now and next week. So you can let the team know we are talking about chapter six, which is attitude. My favorite topic in the world of success, the extra plus in leadership is your attitude. And you could go places because of your attitude. You know it, you've met people who you're like, wow, that person has an incredible attitude. You know, they're gonna be do great in life no matter what. So your attitude can take you to your highest altitude. 